So welcome again to our um, gathering for a reading and reflection. I'm using the same reading over a series of weeks because they wanted us to preach our mission. Um, our mission as a church is to do with building community, strengthening worship and growing in service. But I wanted to unpack that a little bit with you today. So today we're thinking about building community. I'm going to read from Acts chapter 2. And it's from verse 37. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart. And they said to Peter and to the other apostles, Brothers, what should we do? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptised, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be forgiven, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you, for your children, and for all who are far away, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to him. And he testified with many other arguments, and exhorted them, saying, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. So those who welcomed his message were baptised, and that day about 3,000 persons were added. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. And awe came upon everyone, because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and they ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. This is the word of the Lord. Let me share an illustration today from a, um, a movie. Now it's a movie that if you haven't seen it, chances are your kids or your grandkids have. It's an animated movie called Ice Age. And it, it illustrates today's theme, so, so bear with me as I tell you a little bit of the... Bear with me as I set the scene. In, in, in this particular part of the film, saber-toothed tigers have attacked a tribe of nomads. And a little baby has got separated from, from her family, or his family. The little baby is discovered by, by three characters, by a woolly mammoth named Manfred, by a sloth named Sid, and by a saber-toothed tiger called Diego. These three unlikely companions unite in a common mission to return the baby to the baby's father. And as the trio trek through the mountains with the baby in tow, they go through all sorts of terrain. At one point they pass a volcano and the volcano starts to erupt. Now a volcano erupting is bad enough, but remember it's the ice age. So the real problem occurs when the, the ice starts to melt. And all of a sudden, Diego and Manfred and Sid find themselves in perilous danger. And at one point, Diego jumps. He jumps across a, a chasm as the ice caps start to break, but doesn't get far enough. And he puts his old claws into the ice, but he hasn't made it across. And as he looks down, there's nothing but the, the foamy descent below him. And at that point, Manfred the Mammoth, the big hairy mammoth that he is, all of a sudden swoops under Diego and quickly tosses the tiger or the saber to the tiger upward into safety. Diego realizes the danger involved in the rescue and he's moved by Manfred's compassion and courage and sacrifice. And he says this, why did you do that? You could have died trying to save me. And the mammoth responds. He says, that's what you do when you're part of a herd. You look after each other. And Sid, the sloth, who is the, the comic 
character, but also the conscience of the show in many ways, says this. He says, I don't know about you guys, but we are one strange herd. One strange herd. I don't know about you, but I think that's a great description of what it is to be the church. We are one strange herd. We're a mix of people with different personalities, with different backgrounds, with different ideas about how the world should look or not. We have different spiritual DNAs and journeys. We might never gather together in normal life circumstances except for one thing that we have in common. That is that we follow Christ. The word in the Bible for Christian community is the word kanonia or kanonia. And it's a Greek word. It occurs 20 times in scripture, but the first time we hear it is in the Acts of the Apostles, and it's the passage that we read today. The community, the early church, the kononia, they shared together, they ate together, they prayed together, they grew together. And there's no exact English translation of kononia, but it, it suggests at its core a relationship. It's a, a type of trust and friendship. Some have translated it as fellowship, but that doesn't go far enough. It's community or commune. It's, it's a sense of interdependence. One of the taglines of our mission is, is to build community. What does it mean, however, to build community? How do we do that? Let me say a few very short things about community. First is this. Community is ultimately, ultimately comes out of our own relationship with Jesus Christ. Every so often people say to me, they say the church is all about community. And when, they, when I hear that, I'm generally on board with it. Well, I'm about 98% on board with it. The 2% of me that's not sure is the 2% that just needs a little bit of clarification. What do you mean by that? Because sometimes I wonder if it's shorthand for, we like the social side of church, we like the gathering together, we like the parish fates, we love all of that kind of stuff, but we don't really do the Jesus stuff. But if we take Jesus out of the church community, then what are we? We are a rotary with a pointy roof. We are a community centre full of unusually dressed people. Our kanonia with each other, our sense of being community, is based on our communion with Christ. That's what gives us the capacity to share without being resentful. It's what enables us to pray without being critical or nosy. It's what enables us to welcome without judging and to love without holding back. Our communion with one another always comes out of our communion with Christ. You take Jesus out of the equation and watch the community disintegrate fast. Second thing I want to say about community is this. Community is always outward looking. It's never inward looking. I do an activity with small groups and I ask them to stand in a circle. We stand in a circle together and I, send, and I hold the hand of the person beside you. We hold hands and we stand shoulder to shoulder. And then I say, to some extent, this represents Christian community. We hold in hands shows that we are interdependent and connected. Being shoulder to shoulder means that we stand in solidarity and we gain strength 
from knowing someone is standing beside us. But I say the problem with that, with that circle is that it's inward looking. So if you're on the outside of it, how on earth do you find a way in? And that circle too quickly can become self-absorbed and familiar. Then I say, let go of the person's hand and do a 180. And then hold hands again. Because something happens there. We're still a circle. We're still shoulder to shoulder. We're still holding hands. But we're looking outwards. And it's the strength of the circle that gives us the ability to look outward. And the last thing I want to say about community is this. Genuine Christian community is always open. One of the reasons why Jesus gets in trouble is because his notion of the Christian community bumps against the Pharisees because their community was a closed community. You had to obey a certain list of purity laws. You had to have your spiritual ancestry. Who was your granny or your great granny or your father? And Jesus says, no. To be part of my community, well, by nature of being who you are, you're in the community. The arms are open. The table is open. The invitation is to everyone. Everyone, the familiar and the unfamiliar. When the church is working properly, it becomes a place where we start thinking completely differently about the people around us. We find ourselves wanting to bring more and more of those who may not belong anywhere else into the community and are heard, our community becomes a place of love and service. A place where people experience the transforming power of Jesus at work in their lives. That's what it means for us to build community together. Thanks be to God. Have a great week.